Good afternoon, lovely audience. How is everyone doing tonight? I hope you all had a great lunch, some great talks uh, in your breaks. I'm really excited to talk to you about two things that I'm really passionate about. Behavior change or behavior science and artificial intelligence in the form of chat GPT. This is one of the last three talks for the night, so I'm hope I, I'm hopeful you're really, really fired up and excited. So before I begin, I want to say good morning, good afternoon, or good night to the ones that are watching this conference online. That's how I started initially back uh, in 2020 when it was full lockdown. I put the kettle on at 2 a.m. in the morning, and then I started watching all the wonderful speakers. And here I am today on the stage uh, sharing it with some of the legends and some of my idols as well. So with that, let's kick it off. What's the first thing that pops into your head when you hear of ChatGPT? Is it Wally, -E, the friendly robot? Is it the Terminator? Is it the end of the world as we know it? Or is it the Matrix? Whatever it is, I want you for the next 30 minutes to keep an open mind and be as curious as children. A little bit about myself. In my day job, I'm a security consultant with Aura, Aura Information Security back in New Zealand. My background is network engineering, security operations, security awareness, leadership, and governance, risk, and compliance. So I've been around. In my, in my um, spare time, I like to learn everything and anything about how the mind works. I've been doing that for the last seven years. So human behavior, neuroscience, psychology, and I have a big interest in artificial intelligence. So as you see, it's an interesting combination of skills and passions, which I put together in two pieces of research in Aura's research blog, one of them being the foundation for this talk today. I also have a personal blog called Cyberbytes, a little play on words there, where I combine my professional experience with my passion for writing and how the mind works. If you wanna to connect to, with me via LinkedIn, please do so. There were quite a few of you who have already done so, so thank you. Uh, feel free to continue. So what's on the menu tonight? The specials are the problem with designing a human risk management program and how we can solve it. And hint, starts with chat and ends with GPT. I will show you how to do that in very detailed steps. Uh, we'll explore the outputs, uh, how to tweak the results from ChatGPT, some key takeaways and some helpful resources to get you started uh, on your journey with ChatGPT and designing your program. And hopefully we'll have some Q&A at the end. So what's the problem with designing a human risk management program? Well, first of all, it takes a lot of effort to create an effective program for managing human risk. You need a big community like all of you smart and passionate people here and online. That's why we have the SAN super friendly community, for example. You need to read a lot of reports like the Verizon DBIR and similar publications because you do need to stay up to date with the latest trends in this field. And especially, you need a lot of learning. So there are quite a few books on neuroscience, psychology, behavioral science, and so on. Uh, you need to upskill yourself to create an effective program. And someone put together 100 books, how to become a behavioral design expert, for example. And lastly, you need to create a lot of content in the form of newsletters, videos, emails, and presentations. 
and a lot of them can look very colorful. And we also know, I think we already heard four, five, six times in the last two days, the word behavior change. Behavior change is key to an effective human risk management program. And for that, the easiest way is to use a well-known behavior change model and the FOG model or MAP is one of the well-known and widely used behavior change models which are incorporated in designing security awareness programs. So we know all this. However, time is a scarce resource. If you're struggling to put all of this together in your program while doing other tasks in your day-to-day -day job, perhaps, chances are you are not alone. But you don't need to panic. Can I get a show of hands from all of you in the room and those of you on Slack if you would like a hand to integrate behavior change in your program. Well, it's probably almost everyone. Well, help is on the way, so you're in luck. What if I told you I know someone or something that can act as an assistant in designing your program, that can generate content fast, and lets you easily modify it, thus making your job easier and more efficient. And because it does the heavy lifting of generating content for you, it gives you back the gift of time so that you can focus on what's really important to you, designing your program. And that assistant is obviously ChatGPT. ChatGPT was launched at the end of 2022, November to be more exact, and it showed tremendous promise for businesses in improving efficiency and productivity. And we too can use it to design our program and make things more efficient and easy for us, of course. So here's some real life use cases that uh, we'll explore next. For the examples, I chose two of my favorite target security behaviors using a password manager to reinforce generating unique, random, strong passwords. And the second one is using MFA to provide extra protection to credentials. I believe these were or still are the tier one security behaviors in SEBDB, as Oz mentioned earlier. And the next uh, component of the use cases is choosing a behavior change model. So as mentioned before, I chose the fog map model. It has three components, motivation. That is why would people want to use a password manager or MFA? The next one is ability. Are people capable of using a password manager or MFA? and prompts or triggers, which enable the manifestation of the security behaviors. So here's how. So we're gonna use ChatGPT to generate a behavior change strategy using the fog map model for the two target security behaviors, MFA and password managers. I'm going to show you how to build the initial prompt, how to how the generated outputs look, uh, to tweak and refine them to our best interest and needs, and then some takeaways quickly after. This is how the initial prompt looks like. Uh, it's prompt engineering. I know it looks daunting, but we'll explore it and break it down in steps. The secret is to create a good initial prompt that does the heavy lifting for you. The more effort you put into the initial prompt, the more you will get out of ChatGPT. This is the secret. So we start with setting the expert mode. I tell ChatGPT, I want you to act 
as a behavioral science and cybersecurity advisor. And I also include additional specialized skills. I also want you to use your psychology knowledge. Next, I tell ChatGPT what to expect as inputs or variables. That is the target segment. I chose something generic this time, working professionals. The target sector, healthcare. That can be something else. I'll show you later. Target behaviors, of course, MFA and password managers usage. And you need to tell ChatGPT, lastly, what the output should be. So the output should be a detailed POG behavioral mapping and an effective step-by-step -step behavior change strategy. So this is how it looks like with the breakdown, with the different components. And by the way, the slides are all available to you to explore in your own time when you download them. So don't worry if you can't see everything or can't capture everything as I'm talking. The generated output is generated in two steps. Step one is the mapping, the fog map behavioral model statements with the motivation, ability, and prompt statements. And in step two, we're gonna see the actual step-by-step -step behavioral change strategy, which will include the map statements. Uh, there's a lot of output, so I'm not gonna read everything from the screen, but I will try and summarize some of the, some of the generated content from ChatGPT. So first of all, in green, you see encircled the actual behavioral mapping for motivation. And in red, that's the generated output tailored to the target segment, that's healthcare. And why is that important? That's important because it shows ChatGPT listened to our initial prompt and created a customized output for us. We didn't waste time creating the initial prompt. So that's important. Let's see what ChatGPT gave us for motivation. Personal security. So if people use password managers, it can enhance their personal security and also protect patient info. I find that reasonable and accurate. Professional reputation. If people practice good security, if healthcare providers practice uh, good security practices, that can boost professional reputation and improve patient trust. Why? Well, who do you trust more? A healthcare provider who actually puts effort in using MFA and password managers to protect your data or, or one who doesn't? And lastly, the compliance aspect which can be either a carrot or a stick, but it's still a motivator. If healthcare professionals adhere to cyber regulations and standards that should avoid legal consequences and penalties. So far, so good. For the ability statement, and by the way, ChatGPT aims to explain the mechanism or the logic behind each of the three components. In this case with ability, for example, it explains that the ability component aims to assess the obstacles which get in the way of the adoption of password managers or MFA. So let's see what some of those are. For example, not being familiar with the ease of use or the benefits of MFA and password managers. What does that mean? That means they might need some training or some education to see what the benefits are. Number two, healthcare professionals might find the tools too complex to use. And that may prevent adoption of the password managers and MFA. And number three, time constraints. We all know healthcare providers are busy people saving lives. So they might not have time actually learning new tools like password managers and MFA and so on. So far, so good again. And lastly, the prompts, which trigger the behaviors. 
we have awareness and training education to educate employees about importance and advantages of MFA and password managers. We have rewards and incentives for those who actively use MFA and password managers. Or we have implementing email pop-up or mobile notifications. And that can prompt people to use password managers and MFA. And a little note here, prompts like email notifications or pop-ups can get very annoying. So you do need to take the results with a, gra with a grain of salt. Step two, the actual behavior change strategy. So I know that's a lot. So let's go through them one by one. We have healthcare specific awareness campaigns. You can do that. And through that, you can explain the critical role of healthcare professionals protecting patient data and also the consequences of having inadequate security measures. For example, weak passwords or no MFA. You can use examples. We have quite a few uh, hospitals, for example, hit by ransomware and other incidents because of weak credentials or unauthenticated or unauthorized access. You can create incentives tied to patient data protection. For example, you can reward departments with the highest adoption rate for using password managers and MFA. And you can explain how these measures build trust with patients and enhance the organization's reputation. You can use nudges like social proofing by showing how other healthcare professionals prioritize patient privacy and security. You can increase the collaboration between healthcare leadership and IT departments to promote password managers and MFA adoption among healthcare staff by emphasizing the roles of these measures. And because what gets measured gets managed, I did ask ChatGPT to give me a few results, to generate a few results on how to measure the effectiveness of the suggested behavior change strategy. And it gave me quite a few. So we can measure adoption rate for password managers and multi-factor authentication before and after the behavior change strategy is implemented and compare the data. We can monitor the frequency of logins of password changes and MFA activations before and after the implementation of the strategy. We can gather feedback via surveys and interviews with healthcare staff on their experience with password managers and MFA, again, before and after the implementation, that would assess their perception. Does it have a positive impact on their workflow or productivity? And we can analyze the number of incidents and severity before and after the behavior change strategy implementation. We're looking for weak passwords and also unauthorized access incidents going down. That would show that the behavior change intervention or strategy is working. And we can also measure training completion rate. I know this has been done to death, but it's still there. We can track participation rate in incentive programs aimed to encourage password managers and MFA adoption. Does it have a positive impact on behavior change? We can analyze password strength, password strength change compared to the baseline, if you have the capability to do this, of course, within your organization. And lastly, we can assess the level of support from leaders and executives in promoting password managers and MFA to evaluate if their involvement positively influenced behavior change. So everything. I talked about today is all chat GPT. 
the only thing I've done is to ask it perhaps to rewrite once or twice some of the statements. And I know this is a lot. I did a lot of talking. Before I move on, can I get a show of hands? And for those of you on Slack, if what you've heard so far would improve or you would find useful in your day-to-day -day job or in designing your program. Okay, I'm getting some chat GPT fans, that's good. Right, moving on. Um, if you're not satisfied with what chat GPT gave you so far, you can ask it to regenerate some of the statements. And I've heard that saying, please to chat GPT actually goes a long way. Or you can ask, actually ask chat GPT to generate more examples. I know it generated about three for each of the map statements. I'm not sure why three, maybe it likes the number three, I'm not sure. But you can ask it to generate five, 10, 50, anything you want. So for example, here's, uh, here's a regenerated prompt statement. And I think in some cases, ChatGPT was lacking a bit of inspiration because one of them is sending prompts during periods of high admission rate, patient admission rate. So that's during peak patient admission. And I'm pretty sure that's probably the wrong time to be sending notifications and pop-ups. So, you know, take the results with a grain of salt, put your skeptical hat on. But you can find some nuggets of gold in there. For example, uh, you can trigger MFA prompts for people to enable MFA right after a failed login. So there are some nuggets in there. You just need to start using it. So what do we know so far? Well, we can mix and match. Uh, we can use alternative behaviors uh, alternative behavior change frameworks. I use the FOG model. You can use COMBI. You can combine with nudge theory as well. You can also use any other target security behaviors. I use MFA and password managers. You can use anything else. Just use SEBDB. It's a really, really good tool. You can modify the target segment. I used a generic... Um, you know, workers, working professionals. You can use different target segments like demographics, age, location, culture. You can modify the target segment, target sector as well. I used healthcare. You can use finance, insurance companies, aviation, research and development, engineering, you name it. It's, it's the possibilities are basically endless. So a few takeaways from all this chat GPT talk, you need to spend a bit of time to create the initial prompt, which does the heavy lifting for you. That's the secret. If things are too generic, if the results are too generic, you can always ask chat GPT to regenerate the output to be more tailored to your needs. You can use your, you should use, you should use your best judgment so put your skeptical hat on, because as Kerry showed in the last talk, not all output can be usable. And lastly, it does take a bit of fiddling around with it to get some nuggets of gold out of it. And by the way, how long do you think it took me to generate all this output? Five hours, five days, five minutes, five seconds? Five minutes? Okay, it wasn't five minutes because I had to rewrite a few things. So it was 15 minutes. 15 minutes, one five. And because I'm talking about risk in my day job all the time, I really can't leave the stage without briefly mentioning the risks that come with this wonderful tool. One of them is trust. So can we actually trust what ChatGPT gives us? We all know ChatGPT is absolutely notorious at giving us inaccurate or even untrue information. 
So that's called hallucination. My advice is if you're planning to use ChatGPT in your day-to-day -day work, have someone peer review the results before you include them in your program. And I want to say, when I did the research, I used ChatGPT 3.5, the free version, not the paid version. I can only assume ChatGPT 4 or the paid version has better results. And another thing I wanted to say, I did the research initially six months ago. I redid the research three weeks ago. So you have fresh information. It got much better more accurate, more, more tailored to my initial prompt, less errors. So overall, it got much better. It's getting better every month. So the other risk is data breaches. So that's a big one. It's in the headlines every now and then. People really need to know that you shouldn't put personal information or if you're using it at work, you shouldn't put proprietary company information or confidential company information in chat GPT. I would like to say treat it as social media where everyone can see what you're posting, but I don't think it's a good idea because people treat social media too loosely these days. So I'll just say, be careful, be careful what you put into chat GPT because it might get public. So key takeaways from all this. I really hope that all of you here and online are inspired from my talk to start using ChatGPT to ease their work and to assist in designing their program. And I also hope that you are empowered and curious to play an experiment with ChatGPT and that you will be confident in doing so to get the full benefit from ChatGPT while avoiding the risks. And some helpful resources to get you started on your journey with ChatGPT. There's the research blog, which contains the foundation for the stock and the rationale. There's the fog behavior model that's really useful to know about. There's my personal blog if you want to check it out. Uh, there's a blog and a podcast called Habit Weekly. That's my one-stop shop for anything related to behavior science and behavioral design material. And SEPDB, again, wonderful tool. Use it. And 51 chat GPT prompts I gathered from a post on LinkedIn, I believe just to give you a, an idea how to build a good initial prompt. And also these slides can be uh, a helpful resource. Thank you.